In this week's government slash NGO section, a bit of a smack in the face. Hamburg Climate Futures Outlook 2023 comes via the Click Center at Universitat Hamburg, authored by a powerhouse team. With a comprehensive look at our state of natural and human affairs, the report's main payload is quick to read. Reaching worldwide deep decarbonization by 2050 is currently not plausible, given the observable trajectories of social drivers. The select physical processes of public interest only moderately, if at all, inhibit the plausibility of attaining the Paris Agreement temperature goals, although they can substantially modify the physical boundary conditions for society. Meeting the 1.5 degrees Celsius Paris Agreement temperature goal is not plausible, but limiting the global temperature rise to well below 2 degrees Celsius can become plausible if ambition, implementation, and knowledge gaps are closed. Do however note a glimmer of hope, given the observable trajectories of social drivers. We have control over the throttle and steering to create our trajectory, levers we're not fully effectively employing. This report's conclusion implies we should grip and use our levers of control harder, waste no capacity. The main methods and locations of our control options are conveniently provided in the report's circumspect, meticulous body. It's our challenge to provide means of falsification of the author's projections, here in our world. Jeremy Moulton reviews a new book built on a premise that is both provocative and unsurprising, The Performative State, Public Scrutiny and Environmental Governance in China by Isaiah Ding. As summarized by Moulton, the performative state hinges on a simple and effective argument, when there is a high level of public scrutiny and demand for action, but state capacity is simultaneously weak, the state will proceed to act performatively to appear to be meeting public demands. This is not indicative of a lack of sincerity, it's more complicated than just lying and is perhaps even arguably reflective of trying too hard with too little. Towards more impactful energy research, the salient role of social sciences and humanities makes the case for us not fighting with no legs and only one arm. Eventually, it'll sink into our heads, with our success at confronting and solving our climate problem being mostly governed by human nature, ignoring human nature in our effort to do this is remarkably dense. Gracia Brookman et al. remind us of this in a more productive and thorough fashion, because the lesson still hasn't been absorbed. The authors are very kind, given obtusely slow uptake on the part of us pupils. Climate change versus energy security? The conditional support for energy sources among Western Europeans, Chist of Arndt does a really nice job of testing three hypotheses, with the third essentially an extension of the first two. Higher worries about climate change increase the support for renewable energies and decrease the support for fossil forms of energy, and higher worries about energy security decrease the support for renewable energies and increase the support for fossil forms of energy. We may not find the formally derived answers so surprising, but oddly enough these questions have never before been properly tested for predictable conclusions. Not least, this paper features a positive torrent of interesting citations setting up the state of the art leading to this new investigation, especially as it includes an explicit literature review in its introductory section. Bromley, Kahn and Kenyon have instantly elicited some remarkably hysterical reactions with their paper dust as a solar shield. These astrophysics researchers are conducting what for practical purposes is only a thought experiment given the effectively impossibly insurmountable mountain of deployment challenges entailed in their model. Meanwhile, assuming enough people were so genuinely naive as to imagine there's a plausible chance of living a happy future behind a lunar dust cloud, how are we doing with actual moral hazards down on the ground, in reality? Is it truly the case that will form a connection and excuse between this impracticable scheme and our frequently compromised decisions, such as to jaunt to Ibiza, Spain for a weekend via jet? How do we explain our behavior before such putative temptations emerged? Is geoengineering research such dangerous thought crime? Research listed here only a short while ago calls abstract worry over moral hazards posed by work into question. 113 articles in 52 journals by 715 contributing authors. Physical Science of Climate Change Effects Climate Responses Under an Extreme Quiet Sun Scenario Lou et al., Journal of Geophysical Research, Atmospheres, 10.1029-2022JD037626 Controls on surface warming by winter Arctic moist intrusions in idealized large eddy simulations Dimitrellos et al., 
Journal of Climate, Open Access 10.1175 slash CLI D22-0174.1. Effects of Surface Heating on Coastal Upwelling Intensity Young and Cho, Journal of Geophysical Research, Oceans, 10.1029 slash 2022 JC018795. Read more. One comments. Myths about fossil fuels and renewable energy are circulating again. Don't buy them. Posted on February 8, 2023 by guest author. This is a repost from Yale Climate Connection.